Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltori, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. This is Les Filles Marie, The Marriageable Girls, which is the concurrent series to my Fille du Roi series that I began first. After a while, I said, I really need to explore the ladies who came before, who weren't part of any special program, and their stories are incredible. We are now on episode 87, which is a remarkable, since we started it in 2023, just last year, and there are about 262. There's not that as many Fia Marie, but still, I'm going to tell every story I can. So stay with me and let me know in the comments below if there's one that you really want me to get to know. I'd appreciate a heads up. And so let me show you ways you can support the channel. Subscribe, easy, like a video, and notify. That is something that obviously you'll be able to get the, be told whenever there's a new video uh, released. That is always helpful. The next ways are ways to help the channel grow. We have Coffee and Patreon, which are external platforms. And then we also have a PayPal button that's on my actual um, website, Have Roots Will Travel. And while, if you're, you happen to go there, make sure you check out the index so you can see which ones I've done already. I'm, we're over 400 or so of episodes right now of both series. So there's a lot in the bank so to speak. So let me know um, if there's one that I haven't yet done. I plan on doing them all, but obviously if you let me know, I'll put yours to the front of the line. So with that being said, let's get to know episode number 87 of Les Gilles Marie. Before we begin, let's have a look at Les Gilles Marie. These were women who came between 1634 and 1662 to New France. They are the marriageable girls. These ladies did not come in groups. They came one at a time, maybe a few. They did not have a sponsorship. They did not have any gifts from the government or anything like that. Their passages were usually paid by a church or a, you know some sort of organization. But generally speaking, they took you know, their life in their hands, so to speak, and said, you know what, I'm going to try my hand at a, at a new life. And in 1634, as many of you know, this was the beginning of the second stage of Quebec or New France. And it, there was nothing there. It was a barren, very, very small settlement. So the ladies, particularly those that came be, before, you know, 1655, and now we come to episode 87, Isabelle dit Marie Giroux. Now remember that dit means also known as, so Isabelle or Marie, but we're going to call her Isabelle for now. Now she comes to us as a viewer request. I did not find her in my files, but I did find her in one file that I had done uh, for a celebrity. And that celebrity is Taylor Swift. So let's have a look and get to know Isabelle a little bit better. Al was born in 1640 in a town called La Tremblade in France. The name of the town probably derives from the presence of aspen trees, Trembly, in the forest of this region during the Middle Ages. There are about 4,500 people that live here. It is part of the Nouvelle Aquitaine region and it is part of the Charente Maritime. This is the church that exists in La Tremblade at the, you know, for now, and and we believe that it is the church that she was baptized in. However, we do not know who her parents are. So without that knowledge, we can't, we don't have her baptismal, and it wasn't listed in her marriage record. So with that being said, we know that she comes from there, but we don't know the particulars. We know that Isabelle arrives in New France in 1662. She is one of the last Via Marie to arrive before the new program of Les Filles du Roi begins. She selected and who selected her? His name, Abel Turcotte. He was born in 1631 in Mouleron, à Parade, in France. Since 2016, it's known as Mouleron. 
Mouleron Saint-Germain. His parents are also unknown. Now, Mouleron Alferrad is part of the Pays de la Loire, as you can see on the right, region of France. And inside that region, we have Le Vendée, Le Vendée de Bertrand. He would have been baptized in the small church of Église saint Denis that has existed since the 13th century. And we also have about 1,500 people that live there currently. So from what I've been able to ascertain, Abel comes to New France in about 1662, sometime in the spring and summer. I wonder if they were on the same ship. You never know. I like to think that maybe they were and they fell in love, but probably not. Now, Abel would be would have a profession. He was a miller and as such was in great demand. So let's have a look at when they got married. So by November 27th, 1662, Abel and Isabel were married actually at the church at Chateau Richer. So that was kind of interesting because that's sort of where he kind of settled for a little while until they established themselves in a, another location. Now the family did settle on Ile d'Orléans, the very famous place. It's located in the St. Lawrence River, about three miles east of downtown Quebec City. The island was one of the very first parts of the province to be colonized by the French, and a large percentage of French Canadians can trace their ancestry to the early residents of this island. Remember that it's not always called Ile d'Orléans. From some of your older information, you may see it referred to as Grand Ile, Saint Marie, Saint Laurent, and that is because before it was called that, it was eventually changed in honor of the second son of King Francis. Henry II was the Duke of Orléans, and so that is why Ile d'Orléans was named after him. Now, it is an incredible island. I visited last year, and the memories are still so fresh in my mind. Now, it's important also to note, in the middle picture, you'll see the six different divisions. We have saint Petronille, saint pierre saint Famille on the top there is actually the very first parish that was created. We have Saint-François, Saint-Jean, Saint-Laurent. So it's very important, if you can, to identify which parish your family emanated to. Or, you know, sometimes they started off in saint Famille, especially if they were very early on, because saint Famille was the only game in town. Eventually, they moved to Saint-Jean or different um, St. Francois up the island, that sort of thing. So you need to always be aware of that. Now in the 1666 census, we have Abel and Isabelle listed. They're about 10 years apart in this particular, um, in this particular census. We have Francois, his son. Marc, Pierre is a engagé, so they have a domestic. Matre, another domestic. And I can't really say um, Guy Berdet, Guy Saint-Martin, Engagé Domestic. So they have three domestics working for them, which is quite saying quite a bit. Now, in the 1667 census, I don't know if they just didn't count them or not, but it, it is saying that Abel is the farmer of Monsieur Levesque, which often happened. He farmed his, he didn't farm his land, he farmed someone else's. And then we have, now she's called Marie, François, Marie, Geneviève, and they have 14 beasts, so that's 14 cattle probably, and 50 arpa, I mean that is an enormous amount in 1667, so that translates probably in terms of acres, probably about 44 acres in all, so that's just an amazing, an amazing amount. They would go on to have eight children together. François would marry Marguerite Wimet and would have nine children, eight of whom made it to adulthood. Marie would marry Joseph Noël Charlin and have five children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Joseph's mother was Fille Marie Jacqueline Borde, who we have not yet profiled. Geneviève married Antoine Binadeau and they would have 11 children, all of whom would survive, nine who would leave descendants. Antoine's mother was Geneviève Blanchon, a fille marie who we have not yet profiled. Françoise would marry Jacques Plante and would have four children, two of whom would survive, one who would leave descendants. Anne married Simon Bilado, 
and they would have seven children, five of whom would make it. Simon's mother was also Geneviève Longchamp, whom we have not yet profiled as a fille mariée. René married Nicolas Asselin and would have seven children, six who survived, five who left descendants. Marie Madeleine married Pierre Lepage and would have seven children, three of whom made it to adulthood. Louis married Marguerite Lepage and would have four children, three of whom would make it to adulthood. He then would marry Marie Angelique Plante and would have 12 children, seven of whom made it to adulthood, six who left descendants. In the 1681 census, we find Abel and Marie, or Isabel, their children, Marie, Geneviève, Françoise, Anne, René, and Madeleine, Louis, François. They have one gun and eight d'accord, so either eight goats or eight bulls, and 25 arpavala, about 22 acres of land. And the final years, Abel would die at age 55 in 1687. It is early, even for those years, for him to have passed on before age 60. He and Marie would have been married 35 years. Marie herself would not remarry, and she would pass away in 1713 at the age of 73, and would leave us by 1729, with 140 descendants. The name Turku or Turcut is a very famous one, and it is featured in our French Canadian Ancestors, Volume 2. Please refer to the Facebook group that is so wonderful, our free French Canadian Ancestors, where they host um, some of these files for you to be able to download and you can then read it. If you can get your hands on this volume, volume two of our French Canadian Ancestors, there are about 28 volumes, I believe. And if you can get your hands on it, oh my goodness, let me know. <laughs> but barring that, please have a look at our free French Canadian Ancestors. That will definitely help you out. And I wanted to show you, there's so many variations of this name. And I'm just going to go through them a bit. Some of them it's very hard to pronounce. Shirkot, Shirku, Duma, Duto. Remember that the D names become part of that name as well. Turkot, you can see the spelling there. Trakil, Tur, Turku, Turku, Turke, Turku, Turkos, Turkot, Turkot, which is the more familiar. Turelu, Turjan, Turk, Turka, Turku, Turko and Villandre. Villandre would come from a D name. So it's just amazing for you to have a look at how this variations in name can amount to the same, same ancestor for you. When I was on the island last year, I took special pains to be able to take this amazing photo of the monument to the founders. And Abel Turcot and Marie Giroux are listed there. And then they are also listed in the 300 or so founders book that is also part of the, uh, the tribute to them. So you can really, if you, if this is your ancestor, I mean, standing there, in front, I know for me, I have ancestors that were on, are on that memorial and it was profoundly powerful to realize just the kind of um, effort they did to establish themselves here in the new world. So it is a really powerful and it is a permanent memorial to be able to pay homage to both Abel Turcot and Marie-Isabelle Giroux. And so we come to the end of episode 87. Isabelle really did leave a lasting legacy. Anybody who's been to Quebec knows that the family name of Turcot remains a very, very strong and popular name. So I myself have known many, many Turcots in my life, even though it's not part of my family tree. Um, I went to school with Turcot. I lived across the street from Turcot, all of that. So it is definitely... Her legacy lives on, to say the least. And the fact that she was able to be a pioneer at in Orléans, to continue to, uh, to thrive no matter if her husband had left, she did not remarry, and she kept on keeping on. And that, my friends, is a woman of substance. 
So you can be very proud if this is your great grandmother. And I also want to say thank you to my patron supporters and subscribers. Thank you so much, all of you, for being there for me. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. And with that being said, let us have a look at episode number 88. I'll see you on episode 88. Until then, au revoir.